welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, today is a very informative show, and we're excited right. to have Elrika Drevnak with us. She's a registered nurse and a fertility education manager for an organization called FEM. And what does FEMM -M stand for? Fertility Education and Medical Management. FEM works to educate women and connect them with providers who can offer genuine health care and fertility management. Go to their great website, femhealth.org, F-E-M-M, -M, health.org. And FEM has risen to the surface for a time such as this, in this pharmaceutical-driven culture that we live in, and the pill is over <coughs> 50 years old, and uh, doctors were trained in their training, their, their medical schools, to write prescriptions and for anything that ail you, there was a pill for it. And, um, and that is not true. And so we, FEM is beautiful in that it empowers women to know their real health issues, to know the underlying issues as to why this is happening. Why is this out of balance? Why is this out of whack? and to find out and discover, and is there a way to heal it and track it and know it without taking a medicine for it, or even if you need a medicine for it, just to be balanced in a very healthy, natural, and beautiful way, the way God designed you to be. As we prayed before the show, I really believe that there are going to be women who otherwise would not have conceived who will conceive. Women who've had numerous miscarriages that may find out the underlying reasons for that and get that resolved and have children. Uh, women who are gonna be integrated in their delicate, sophisticated, hormonal ecology, something that guys could never know, and that this, is, this can be known. Mm. That this is, this is the natural law that's taking place within uh, their bodies. I think this is gonna be a wonderful show for teenage uh, women, girls, uh, to get off to the best start of knowing their cycle, charting what's going on, and, and maybe registering some things that are out of whack, you know, hormonally, and getting that rectified. Mm. It's about the good life and about part of the feminine genius and their delicacies. So we'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. It's a very hopeful day. May you have ears to hear the message that's going to go out to you. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, today we're excited to have Ulrika Drevnak with us. Now, she is a registered nurse and a fertility education manager for FEM, which stands for Fertility Education and Medical Management. FEM works to educate women mm -hmm. and connect them with providers who can offer genuine health care and fertility management. Go to the great website. It's fem, F-E-M-M, -M, health.org, femhealth.org. Well, darling, Elrico, we're so excited to have you. We want you to first tell our family a little bit about yourself and then how exactly did FEM get started? Well, I'm a registered nurse. I live on Vancouver Island in Canada with my husband, Mark, and our five children. And I love being a nurse and I love treating the whole person. And the reason that I was introduced to FEM was because I myself was having recurrent miscarriages. And so my husband and I lost six children to mm -hmm. recurrent miscarriage. And in my, you know, s searches for what could help, um, FEM came up. And so I decided to become a FEM teacher which is um, something that is an amazing opportunity for 
any woman to do to become a FEM teacher. We have um, 1,500 teachers um, that have been trained since 2012. And um, when I became a FEM teacher in early 2021, that really opened my eyes to just how many women need this education and um, how easy it is to provide it to them as long as they have someone to provide it to them. Mm -hmm. So for me, in um, trying to get to the bottom of why I was having these miscarriages over and over again, um, I was able to get assistance with that. And I was able to find out what was lacking for me. Yeah. And I had low estrogen, I had a little bit of insulin resistance. And so treating those root cause problems mm -hmm. really allowed us to conceive our fifth child. Mm -hmm. And um, she's a joy to us and oh, we're so nice. happy to have her. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, you, you begin with your mm -hmm. story and um, your story is not a story, as far as I know, of using contraception necessarily, right? And so lots of times we associate this difficulty of s willful suppressed ovulation through contraception and the ramifications of this. And I know you're gonna share about that, but that wasn't your case. Your case was, I, I keep miscarrying. It's not about I'm using contraception. Why am I miscarrying? And what can FEM do for me in this? to perhaps reveal some of the underlying causes for this. Precisely. Yeah. So we know that just um, restoring or, you know, suppressing ovulation is a problem and ovulation is a sign of health. And so we know that there are many important systems in the body that rely on ovulation in a cyclical way to be at their best. So the woman's neurological system, her cardiovascular system, her bones, her musculoskeletal system, all of those systems rely on ovulation. That's incredible. Cycle after cycle, having those, all of those reproductive hormones, I mean, of which there are over a dozen at play in any given ovulation cycle, but really those two main ones of estrogen and progesterone, a woman needs those every single cycle in the right amounts for her in order to support her body and support her health. It, so you. when you say, and I want you to tell our family, what is it to suppress your ovulation? What does that mean? And uh, are women doing that intentionally, unintentionally? What, tell our family what it means to suppress your ovulation. So I think a lot of the times it's unintentional when um, a young woman, whether she's a young woman or a woman even in perimenopause, um, presents herself to her physician with any whole host of symptoms. So whether it's irregular bleeding, whether it's um, acne, weight gain, um, even sometimes anxiety or mood disorders, those sometimes are treated with the pill. And we know up to a third of women and maybe even up to two thirds of young women are on the pill for non-contraceptive reasons. Um, we see that there's just really a high level sort of hormonal blanket being thrown on the issue. And what we are learning at FEM and what we've been able to distill from very, very high level reproductive endocrinological research is to say that no, there are better ways. There are better ways to get down to the root cause of what's going on for each individual woman and to be able to walk with that woman so that she can have the best health care and really the health care that she deserves and that her body was designed to mm. get. Well, as I did a little research on this, being a guy who doesn't know all that much, but you know, I put in suppressing uh, you know, ovulation implications or something. And so much of what came up was it doesn't make a difference whether you ovulate or not. It's not negative and it's not positive. I knew enough to say that that just can't be. And you're saying that what's happening during that cycle in ovulation um, is so important that it affects every bodily part of the system of a woman and every organ in her body that ovulation is, it matters so much. So why intentionally, willfully, synthetically suppress it or you're not doing any of that for whatever reason it's just suppressed you know you're not mm -hmm. doing that and it's happening and the implications of that for the entirety of your ecology as a woman I mean, it's huge 
Exactly. And so we really want women to understand and have that education right from the outset. And so one of the programs that our teachers really love is teaching Teen Fem, which is our program for young women in their adolescence. And young women deserve this knowledge too, and so do their parents. And so it's not something necessarily that is, you know, it's a generational shift. Mm -hmm. We have to know that there's more to be able to offer our young women than simply masking their symptoms um, with a hormonal contraceptive. So we want to provide that good service. And you know, it's not really the, you know, medical students don't get this education in med school. And so we really exist to be able, we're so committed to women's health and to their education. So whether it's, whether a woman enters the FEM ecosystem through the FEM app, which is free and available for iPhone and Android users, whether they enter because they receive education by a FEM teacher, or whether they enter because their healthcare provider happens to be a FEM medical provider, we want them to have that information and be able to be informed participants in their own healthcare. Now, you know, we run a pregnancy medical center, so we really see the worst of the generations of. Um, people doing pharmaceuticals and just masking every condition that you stated. Acne, irregular cycles, severe cramping. It's kind of like, here's a script for that. Here's a script for that. And so we never get to the underlying causes as why. And so we have had clients. I mean, I, I sat face to face with clients who have been on the pill since they're 14 and maybe not using it for contraception, but then become sexually active and then now we have an unplanned pregnancy because it's kind of like a carte blanche. It's like, well, you have the pill, you've been taking the pill, and who's taking the pill properly every time, every single day at the same hour, same moment? That isn't happening. And so then there's this failure rate. So then coupling with all of this is, is abortion because it's all fruit from the same tree. And it's denying um, and really taking the woman out of all of her authority and knowledge as being, am I in charge of my health care? And they're not. And so when, they're, when they haven't cycled for 10 years, we have this simple conversation. Don't you think that God in all of his wisdom thought it was best for you? I, I can't imagine how you feel. And then they like, wow, you're right. I don't, I don't know what I feel like. Well, this is awful. You say, and our counselors say, you know, but how is this working for you? Tell us that you've been on this since you're 12 years old and you're now 27 years old. And they, they just, I feel terrible, I feel lousy, I feel bloated, I feel low in my feelings or I feel a little depressed, I feel like. I'm not attracted to my But they think partner. there's no option. You've got all those. My partner's not really attracted to me. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's what we hear over and over is we hear it from our teachers when they're learning how to be teachers is that uh, this has never been explained to me before. Mm -hmm. We hear it from our clients when we're teaching them and we hear it when they're at their medical provider and saying, what do you mean? I didn't know there was another way to treat this. Yeah. And so it's really, really so hopeful and so beautiful that we've taken this science, which which has, you know, it's a relatively new field. It's maybe 70 years old, reproductive endocrinology. But we're able to use all and stand on the shoulders of all those giants who have done that research. And are, we're now able to translate that into clinical practice and help medical providers to treat women so that, they, so that women can learn to see what's normal for them. And then they can move on and be treated by a medical provider when needed yeah. and really get to the root cause, whether it's um, be a, a problem with their prolactin levels, whether mm -hmm. it's a problem with their androgen levels, mm -hmm. whether they've got insulin resistance, whether it's a thyroid issue. Those are some of the main ones that we tend to see, but we can get to the root cause of those, we can treat them, and then they can go on to cycle naturally after that. And how do you get to them? How, is it blood work that they have to do? Because you go to your doctor with those symptoms, they're writing you a script, they're not doing the next step to discover, well my goodness, you had three miscarriages because your progesterone level is so low. Exactly. And maybe after your fourth miscarriage, we'll address that. Right? Yes. How painful for women in that situation. And I know that pain very yeah. well. It's awful. And so we really find with femme providers that they are willing to listen and to hear. 
And so the initial appointment with a femme medical provider is always long for that reason because there's a lot of history to tell. Mm -hmm. And um, taking a good health history is so important. But really there's three pillars. The cycle charting, so right. working with a femme teacher. Even if the woman um, can't work with a femme teacher at the time, she can work with the free app and she can start to chart her cycle in a very basic way. But working with a teacher is a wonderful addition to that where it's available. And then um, her blood work is a second pillar. And then ultrasound oh, is usually a third okay. pillar. So what is FEM doing in and of itself? But then you have these partnerships. So is FEM mainly looking at your charting, what you can find from that, and then you have other healthcare providers or doctors or nurses that are doing the blood work in that, or is FEM doing that? Like that? Exactly, yes. So okay. we have um, the fertility education part of FEM yeah. is really taken by the app and our FEM teachers. And then the medical management part, the MM of FEM, okay. um, is all over the world. So we have providers, we have over 1,300 providers trained since mm -hmm. 2012. Um, they're in 26 countries all over the world. We have FEM Telehealth. There are eight providers that work with FEM Telehealth. And and so women can access this telehealth and get these requisitions for their blood work, get prescriptions through telehealth or through their local providers. So telehealth, of course, we have licenses in almost 50 states of the United States, but we have partnerships around the world. So women can come, they can have a telehealth appointment, they can work with their local provider at home, and that's really what we want to do. We want to bring more providers to our medical trainings. We have um, many different courses that medical providers can take. We have an intro medical provider course, um, a master class that really goes into case studies. And then we also have um, advanced courses. So courses for PCOS, for ovarian aging, which is perimenopause, um, infertility and pregnancy. And next year's course will be on mental health. Excellent. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone in this venture because a lot of people aren't speaking about it, but it's really taken off. I mean, you're really in partnership with these, especially young ladies, teenagers and their mothers, and you go right to the site and you have all of this. I was, again, just doing some searching and uh, FEM came up and I, it was an article by, you know, a pro kind of abortion group. So they were talking about you all and that you're an anti-abortion group and so on. And then they, they did print your response. You said, that isn't the way we articulate ourselves. We're, not, we're just talking about women's health and managing mm, women's health. Precisely. I, I'm, I'm certain you're pro-life, but you know, you did that. But they did say, I don't know if they said, like, you have 400,000 downloads of the app or something. Even they knew that. Yes. So they were like, these people are really doing it. Again, and the there's a need. The there's app, a huge what's need. on the app again? Does it help you to chart? Anything? Helps you to chart your cycle. Okay. It's simple enough that uh, a teen can use it, um, whether she's using it on her mother's phone because mm -hmm. she doesn't have a phone mm -hmm. yet herself, whatever. There's features that you can turn off if you don't need them. LH testing. A teen doesn't need mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, pregnancy testing, a teen doesn't need that. But they can still chart their cycle in a very simple way. And then it can be more high level, whatever features you want to turn on for an adult woman who wants to have those features enabled. It's simple to use, it's beautiful to look at, mm -hmm. and it's free. Yeah, <laughs> love That's it. Awesome. We're going to take a break at this point and hold you over for the third segment, uh, for Perfect. the final segment. And so we'll be right back. Hope that you're getting a lot out of this, especially if you're a woman. You're a mother. Hey, father should be, if you're just watching this, you say, honey, do you know about this? And is this working for you? What about our, our daughter who's 13 years old? I, I want the best health she could possibly have. And I'm hearing about this femme. Uh, so we'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, we're having a great conversation with Elrika Drevnock, and she is over FEM, Fertility Education Medical Management. And she's going to tell us now about some caseworkers. Tell us about case some studies, case yeah. studies. Yes, so I mean, we one case study that I'd love to tell you about is the case of a woman who came to us. Um, she and her husband had been trying to conceive 
for five years. Um, they had not yet achieved a live birth, so they hadn't had a beautiful baby to bring home yet from the hospital. They had had two miscarriages and they were really searching. They didn't know, they knew they didn't want to do IVF and for them it was important to get to, uh, an answer. Um, so they were able to work with a femme medical provider. The issue turned out to be as simple as her thyroid level. So her thyroid level was off and she needed some thyroid medication to treat that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she was making other changes herself in order to achieve that um, pregnancy, some diet and lifestyle changes too. She was able to work with her femme provider to achieve all of that. But the way that she found out about it was because she was working with a femme teacher. Mm -hmm. The FEM teacher was able to tell her and show her in her charting what parameters were off. Mm -hmm. And so when a woman is educated, whether she's, you know, a 35-year-old woman trying to achieve pregnancy or at a different age, um, in this case, she was a 35-year-old woman who wanted to get an answer and her charting was able to give her that answer. So with the good teaching of her FEM teacher mm -hmm. who was able to spot those abnormal parameters mm -hmm. and let her know, you know what, that bleeding, that's too much mm -hmm. for you. Like we don't want to see all that bleeding. That's not in a normal parameter. Mm -hmm. And um, and then cycle length, luteal phase length, all of those things add up to uh, either a healthy cycle or an unhealthy cycle. And when cycles are not falling within normal parameters, we have somewhere to be able to say to women, hey, we've spotted these things. We see that whether it's um, two cycles in a row or three cycles in a year that are outside of normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's three cycles in a year, that's 25% of your health. Right. That's out of whack. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to send those women somewhere and we do have a network of femme providers and her femme medical provider was able to help her and she has a baby boy, beautiful baby boy, her and her husband now. How beautiful and how fixable. Exactly. Right? As opposed to just masking it. Exactly. Or, and, and giving answers that, that don't help. It's like, well, it's okay. This is just how this is going to be for you. Exactly. Maybe you're just, you're just an infertile woman. Exactly. Maybe you should think about adoption. And it's like, well, okay, well, but, but, but never discover it was a thyroid issue. Exactly. And adoption can be a beautiful option for some people. But when your health is showing you that there's something wrong, it, it also affects your long-term health. It affects mm -hmm. your health into your 50s and your 60s. Mm -hmm. And of course, we want these women to be mothers if that's their goal. We also want them to be able to be grandmothers mm -hmm. and live out a healthy life. So when your body systems are telling you that something is wrong, then we need to treat those and we want you to have a long and healthy life after that oh. too. Well, Rika, thank you so much, and thank God we have you back uh, for tomorrow. You can unpack some other gifts that you have for us, and especially for our women who are part of the EWTN family. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I pray that this leads to good health for you, for our, our women, our young ladies, uh, really embracing that feminine genius, genius that's taking place in your body, this theology that God's working out mm -hmm. in your body. So God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. You're never alone and you're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.